The islands were very aware of what was happening in North America. They read a lot of the literature that was circulating, including Tom Paine's Common Sense and the various declarations of uh, uh, the different states as well as uh, Congress. The question is, therefore, why didn't they rebel? And this is an interesting question to ask because they were closely tied with North America and they had much in common. Uh, Americans were very likely, if they uh, went outside of America, to visit the British Islands. Somebody, somebody like George Washington had been to the British Caribbean long before he ever visited uh, Massachusetts. In fact, he went there uh, before the French and Indian War to go with his brother, Lawrence Washington. His brother was suffering from uh, uh, a fever and illness, and they went down to the islands believing that uh, his brother might recover. In actual fact, um, his brother died soon afterwards, and it was through this half-brother, Lawrence Washington, that George Washington inherited Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon was named after Admiral Vernon, with whom Lawrence Washington had served in Central America, an admiral known as Old Grog because he introduced uh, rum into the uh, British Navy. Uh, Benjamin Franklin sent his nephew down to the island of Antigua to set up um, printing presses. And perhaps one of the most famous connections between the islands and North America was Alexander Hamilton, who was born in the island of uh, Nevis. The islands shared with North America a similar political tradition, similar beliefs about liberty. Uh, their assemblies were in fact as well developed uh, as those of the North American colonies. Indeed, the assembly of Jamaica uh, was the first assembly anywhere in British America to be uh, uh, admonished by the House of Commons long before the American uh, Revolution. Uh, what you're looking at now are maces. The mace was uh, a, originally a weapon often carried by bishops during the Middle Ages into war, but increasingly it became a symbol of protection and ultimately a symbol of the freedom of speech. The mace would be carried in front of the Speaker of the House of Commons, and that's still the case today, uh, uh, as a symbol of protecting uh, the right of speech and the right of um, debate. Uh, the mace in Jamaica was actually larger than the mace in the House of Commons. Uh, many of those in the British West Indies were made of solid silver, it's symbolic again of the emphasis they put on their freedom of uh, speech. But the islands didn't rebel. Uh, to some extent, you wouldn't expect small islands to be able to uh, mount a military offensive. But what interested me was that these islands didn't even engage in the pamphlet war with Britain. Uh, they would later produce lots of pamphlets defending slavery. They had printing presses. They had uh, articulate writers. And yet they didn't uh, write pamphlets or really engage uh, in the debate on British policy in America. And the major reasons why were firstly economic. These islands actually depended upon Britain for their trade. Uh, their main produce was sugar and its byproducts of molasses and rum. They produced sugar at 15% higher cost, at least, than the French West Indian islands. These islands could not compete 
in the open market. They relied on the Trade and Navigation Acts, on the protective British duties, to give them access to what was the largest sugar market in the world. The British consumption of sugar uh, was greater than anywhere else. And in fact, per capita, that is still true. Uh, sugar was a labor-intensive crop. Uh, it required a lot of capital to, um, to manufacture and a lot of uh, labor. And the result of that uh, was that they needed to uh, borrow money from England. Uh, they benefited from uh, the English mortgage market, the English credit uh, system. And it was also, consequently, a labor-intensive crop. It required far more laborers to produce sugar per acre than to produce either rice or tobacco. And this labor was much like uh, the southern colonies in North America, slave labor from Africa. Uh, it's estimated that it cost, took three or four times the number of laborers per acre to produce sugar than tobacco. Uh, the average size and optimal size of a sugar plantation was much larger than a uh, rice or tobacco plantation, with the result that about 90% of the population of uh, these islands were black African uh, enslaved people uh, with only a few free uh, black and colored uh, uh, citizens. Uh, we're looking here, I think, at a very interesting juxtaposition. It's the um, mace. Uh, again, we saw some maces earlier. But this particular mace for Grenada has on it uh, the image of uh, sugar works and slaves. And it's a good example of how slavery and freedom were often juxtaposed. People saw no contradiction in owning slaves and asserting their own uh, liberties. Indeed, it was argued by many at the time, not least Samuel Johnson in a pamphlet, Taxation No Tyranny, that uh, slavery actually encouraged uh, uh, elite planters to be that much more zealous of uh, their liberties. Uh, Johnson wrote, uh, why is it that uh, the planter is the first to yelp uh, liberty? Not only uh, was it labor intensive and when 90 percent of the population in nearly all the islands other than Barbados and even in Barbados it was higher than South Carolina at around 60 percent of the population were slaves. But this slave population was constantly dying out. The disease conditions in the islands, but also the hardships of producing sugar, uh, meant that the population had to be constantly replenished by uh, the importation of new slaves from Africa. Uh, this was less and less true in North America, where the slave population not only became self-sustaining, but actually uh, grew. Uh, there was um, uh, a large uh, internal, what the assemblies sometimes called an internal enemy. Uh, the planters were concerned about the possibilities of slave rebellion. Uh, the whites on these islands were such a small minority that they actually wanted British troops to be uh, present. And on St. Vincent, the island of St. Vincent, um, and to some extent Dominica, there were also uh, descendants of the original peoples of the Caribbean who'd largely been wiped out. 
These were Caribs. In most cases, they were intermarried with runaway slaves and known as the Black Caribs. Um, but these islands had not been fully conquered and the concern about safety among the white population was such that they again wanted British troops. If you visit the islands, one of the most um, prominent historic sites are fortresses and barracks. What we're looking at here are the Shirley Heights barracks in the island of uh, Antigua. And today, if you visit, uh, there is just the, um, you know, the remnants of those uh, barracks. But again, they represent the importance of the military. These planters look to troops as a police force, not only to protect them against foreign invasion by France or Spain, but also to police their slaves. Uh, the island of Jamaica and the islands of Antigua both paid the army additional money to be there. They wanted the troops there, unlike uh, the North American colonies, which were protesting the presence of troops and certainly protesting having to make any provision for British troops. Uh, these islands actually doubled the salary of the average uh, soldier. And both Jamaica and Barbados had been doing this since the seven, uh, rather Antigua had been doing this since the 1730s. And the reason was that um, in Jamaica you'd had a maroon war in the 1730s. In Antigua uh, there was what they believed to be a major slave plot uh, and attempted slave uh, rebellion. And they were therefore willing to pay for British troops and wanted them to be present. Another reason why uh, these islands do not rebel is that the wealthy elite on these islands was so wealthy that uh, a number of them actually went back to Britain to live and the chances were that they had been educated in uh, Britain. There were very few schools in the island. Uh, what we're looking at here is one of the few. It's called Codrington College, but it was basically um, uh, for people of high school age. Uh, it's a beautiful location with royal palmetto trees leading up to the drive to the uh, entrance. Uh, but this school was actually shut down shortly before the American Revolution. It simply didn't have enough um, uh, people attending. Uh, the large number of the elite planters were going to the major schools in England or to private tutors in England and then going to college in England. Uh, you know, I looked at uh, members of the assembly and council on the island of Antigua and it's possible to identify more than half of them who'd been educated uh, in Britain and the actual proportion was possibly a lot higher. Uh, indeed, the planters were so wealthy that some of them built major homes in Britain, uh, almost on the style and grandeur of the aristocracy. The most ludicrous was actually built just after the American Revolution. It looked like a cathedral. It was built by the younger William Beckford, and it was called Fonthill Abbey. It actually uh, no longer exists today because it fell down uh, just before uh, Beckford died, and shortly after he'd sold the building when the uh, uh, builder on his deathbed admitted that he'd built no foundations. Uh, West Indians in England were figures of caricature because they were so well known and uh, there was a constant reference in the newspapers to the number of Creoles, as they were often uh, called, living in uh, England. Finally, uh, perhaps a less important reason why they do, don't rebel but one 
worth considering is the fact that the Anglican Church had a virtual monopoly in the islands. Anglicanism taught obedience uh, and was generally regarded as quite a hierarchical religion. It should be said that the Anglican Church was also the official uh, church in many parts of the South and that many of the founders were Anglicans, so it did not necessarily mean that uh, if someone was an Anglican they would become a loyalist, but there were not the same traditions of dissent on the islands. Even though the islands had been founded uh, by uh, a mixture of people from different religious backgrounds, uh, by uh, the 1760s there was no organized presbytery for the Presbyterians. Uh, the Quaker meetings uh, had become very small uh, and there the just weren't the clergy and the buildings and the infrastructure for other religious beliefs. In fact, the planters were generally regarded as being very irreligious, but to the extent that they had a religion, it was generally Anglicanism.